Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is level streaming, the create instance node. Let's run our quick little example. What I have here is a level, and inside this level I have three other maps. So I have four maps total. One is our parent level, and I'm using level streaming to load in the other three. You can actually see the items here. Now these other levels are simple. They are, if I go back to unlit and zoom out, they simply consist of a sphere, or in this case a cube, or a cone. And that's it. There's nothing else. It's just content. Now, normally when you're losing, using level streaming, you'll stream in either using blueprints or persistent. And that is going to be used for building levels like interiors, out, exteriors, and things like that connect together. But you can use level streaming to simply create and add items to your level where you treat your level or your map as a container to hold things. And that's what the create instance node is for. So if I hit play, you'll notice we have nothing in here anymore because these are set to blueprint load only. So inside of our map, we have our basics. If I hit create instance, we're going to see a sphere added. Now what it's doing is it's creating a copy of our game item one map, adding it to our level, and then I'm adjusting the location just to give it a bit of random. And if I keep doing this, I will continually add. And I will have multiple spheres, and these are just copies of the map that we saw earlier that just contained the sphere. And of course, I can keep track of it and then delete them later if needed. So let's look at how this works. One thing is going to be of note is you're going to get an error once you start making this work. And that's because I believe it's just a internal error inside of the engine right now where things aren't properly named. They're using the older Kismet settings. Kismet was the visual scripting language from UDK or Unreal Engine 3. And it's a warning, but it still works. So let's look at it. Let me go ahead and do create instance. And if we do create instance, well, we're not going to find anything. We have to uncheck and go down to game create instance. Or in this case, if you have whoops, a streaming level, let's say we get streaming level right here and our return value is a level streaming reference. If we do that, now we can find the create instance because create instant, create instance has a target of level streaming. So by default with our contact sensitivity off, we're not going to see it. Now by default, our input nodes are going to be target, which is going to be a level streaming. If we were to compile this, you'll notice, well, these other warnings, but if we were to compile it again, this is going to give an error because this blueprint isn't a level streaming. You need to make sure you have it hooked up to a level streaming reference. And then our second input is a unique instance name. Now this is required. When it attempts to create an instance, it's going to check and see if the unique name is unique. If it's not, it will not create the new instance and it will fail out. So that is something to keep in mind and I'll show you as we go through it. And then our output is going to be a level streaming reference. And this is going to be something you might want to save if you're going to manipulate these later. If you're just going to create a level and not worry about it, no big deal. And I'll show you where we run into our error shortly. Now there are a couple important things to keep in mind. When you traditionally, let's see, stream level, when we traditionally load a stream level, you'll have options for making it visible after load and should it block on load. Now you'll notice there's nothing in here regarding loading. It automatically loads it as part of the node. Instances are not automatically visible and are not automatically loaded. By default, it constructs them with the false flag. So that means you can create instances and you could create a hundred of them and wonder why nothing's happening. It's because you haven't set them to be loaded or visible and that's where the error comes from. They'll still be in your, in your game. The editor and the engine will still reference them and you'll still be able to have return values. You're just not going to be able to see them, manipulate them, or do anything with them if we don't load them and make them visible. We'll cover that in a second. 
So for my example here, all I'm doing is getting a streaming level, which is basically saying, hey, I need a streaming level reference to this item, which is my game item one map. Get streaming level and other streaming levels have been covered previously. So I'm just getting a reference at this point to a streaming level. Like I could change this to game item two map. We'll do that right now, for example. And when we reload this, we're gonna find we have cubes. And then for the name, I'm just basically taking a random integer and appending it to the word instance. You would probably want to make sure these are unique because if they aren't unique, it's going to fail. So keep that in mind. Once it creates the instance, we get back a return value. And that return value is a level streaming reference. From that level streaming reference, you have access to a few unique nodes and things like that. And the important ones are going to be the is level loaded and the is level visible. And these are the ones we're going to cover here in a second. What these do is should be loaded. If this is true, the level will be loaded and it will be part of your map. Whether you can see it or not is completely separate, but it will be there. This is important to note because when you want to unload, you would basically set this to false. After this, we basically take our level streaming reference, we plug it into should be visible, and we say yes. So these three nodes go together if you're going to create instances and you want to actually see them and interact with them. That is important to note. You basically have to have these three or nothing's going to happen. Now, in addition to this, I'm simply taking the transform of my level and setting it to my random values, like I said. And that's so we get a little bit of a variety. That's just so you can actually see it happening. And then when I'm done, I'm storing that in an array called loaded levels. Now, this is where your warning is going to come in. If you were attempting to make a variable, let's call this one levels. Uh, we already made one called levels. Let's go ahead and take the one that we've already created and look at it. And you type in level streaming. Keep in mind, this is a level streaming reference. So we want to find a level streaming reference. Unfortunately, we only have level streaming volume and level streaming kismet. Level streaming kismet will work. If you make this a value of level streaming kismet, which you can see here my loaded levels is level streaming kismet. And I've changed it to an array. It will work. It will work for storing and removing and referencing. You will get this warning down here that level streaming kismet reference is not compatible with level streaming reference. And that is incorrect. They are compatible. And I can show you that right here. This is the one we just changed. It will make sure I'll show you right here. We'll go to level streaming kismet reference. We have that as an array. I can go get and plug it in and it will work fine. Even though it gives the warning, it will still work. So that's something to keep in mind and an error you may run into. So if we go back to play and I hit create instance this time, we'll find cubes because I changed it from my spheres to my cubes. Keep in mind all it's doing is just loading up like it would a normal streaming level, but creating a copy of it and then we're manipulating it in terms of transform and making it visible. For my deleting, this one is pretty simple. All I'm doing is getting a reference to my last loaded item, which is in my array. So my last loaded reference to my level streaming and setting should be loaded to false. That's it, that's all you need to do. I have a little cleanup here because I'm using an array. So I get it from the array and then remove it once I've unloaded it. This is for me for housekeeping purposes. You obviously will adjust this as needed. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this video on create instance. It's a great way to separate things. Maybe you have multiple people working on your game and you want to keep things separate. You can have them all on their own unique maps. You could, for, for example, you could have a building and this is a very detailed, well-built building and you can have one person working on it and that person can work all on his own map separately without having to touch anything else. As long as you make sure you're using the correct coordinates, such as you want the snapping point or the locking point or the origin correctly aligned, he can work independently. And then all you'd have to do is create an instance of that and add it to your map and you could have a house. Now, if you wanted this house along a street, 
you could just simply create five houses and put them all along your street. Trees, anything like that. You don't have to use static meshes. You could actually create instances, which are maps, full of life. It's also a great way to make random levels.